All right, let's get to it. In the past, I've presented circuits on using the TC4420 MOSFET drivers. You see them up here. What's the first thing that's wrong with them? Sort of expensive. What I'm going to do is go by, in this video, is circuit theory. How to build your own for a lot less and learn some new circuit theory at the same time. Let's look first at the internal block diagram of a TC4420 or a 4429. It has a MOSFET input, as you can see here. It has a Smith trigger circuit to clean up the, uh, any noise and to give you cleaner triggering and switching. Then it has a little MOSFET driver amp. It has an extra one if it's going to do inverting. And the output, as you see, are, is a P-channel and an N-channel MOSFETs. That's what we're dealing with. What are the parts I'm going to be using in this video? Let's go over them first and address a couple of other issues before people freak out. It also has internal diodes. All of the MOSFETs I'm using here have built-in spike suppressor diodes. I do not draw the diodes separate in the drawing because it clutters up the drawings. And I hope it is understood that the diodes are internal to the MOSFETs. All right, two other components we'll be looking at. This is the CD4093. It's a CMOS part whose uh, voltage range is 3 to 15 volts, and it consists of four independent Smith trigger input NAND gates. Again, it has a voltage range of 3 to 15 volts. The main one that I'll be using, though, is the CD4106B. It consists in a 14-pin dip package of six Schmidt trigger input inverters. The nice part about this, this has a voltage range of 3 to 18 volts. If we go back to the TC4429, its voltage range is up to 18 volts so for these circuits back in this part of back in this part the CD40 106 will work great so that's the part I'm using I'm using some TO92 MOSFETs a few of the T20 TO220 power MOSFETs and mostly a CMOS CD4106B. All right, as a very quick review, this the TC4420 is an 8-pin device. It's simple to hook up. These are two power MOSFETs, P-channel, N-channel, quick review. Another variation that I've that I discussed in another video is building these homemade, basically optocoupler isolated Darlington transistor modules. That this is a generic symbol that I use for this. You, that's discussed in another video. We're not concerned with it here, other than it allows me. To operate a motor at a much higher voltage than I would the logic chips back here. That's all we're going to look at on this. Let's look at building our own and getting rid of this part. All right, let's look at our first circuit. This part we've already seen, other than this 10K pull up resistor for the in channel MOSFET. For the input, I'm just using a single one of the six hex um, Smith trigger input inverters. The power supply for that particular 14 pin dip is at 5 volts. And I use the voltage isolator setup SR1. 
In fact, this voltage up here can be down to 6 or 12 volts for that matter. This does still allow me to isolate the motor voltage from the logic voltage back here. Let's note a problem with this design right off the bat. It works fine. I ha but if I have but if I'm using a 5 volt GPIO for instance, I have to connect pin 14 to 5 volts. If I'm using it at 3 volts, for example, such as the GPIO on a um, Raspberry Pi, which is 3.3 volts, you'll have to set this up here for 3.3 volts when you connect this up. A little bit of a headache. Let's look at another variation of this, and then we're going to do some problem solving. All right. Almost like the previous slide, I'm using a um, CD4093 NAND gate with Schmidt trigger input. And this is how you would connect it. The two inputs would connect together and it acts as a Schmidt trigger inverter. Same deal up here. The Logic GPIO has to match the VCC up here. SR1 still separates my higher motor voltages away from the logic voltages. Okay. Note before I go on that the previous two slides or configurations are non-inverting. This time I've added an input transistor, a bipolar NPN transistor Q1, and I pulled the input of the inverter high through a 10K. If I have a high on the input, it will switch on Q1. It will go low on the input. It will go high here, and it will turn on the IRFZ 44N. That's the in-channel MOSFET. It'll switch to ground. This circuit is inverting. So if it's a high in, it's going to be a low out and vice versa. What's fortunate here, though, if the motor voltage, for example, and remember the uh, CD4106 had ra voltage range was 3 to 18 volts. If the motor drive voltage here is 18 volts and under, say 12 volts, you can hook them to the same source. But if you're going to run this up to 48 volts, you'll have to ke keep the voltage on this integrated circuit under 18 volts and under depending on your voltage you set this at you might have to change this value of this resistor of course when this goes low it creates a current path through the led turns on the darlington transistor setup and output goes high now let's let's go we can do actually better than this all right i have replaced the npn bipolar transistor with a 2n 7000 in channel mosfet as shown here now we're in real nice shape because it doesn't matter what voltage I put in on the uh, input. It can be 3.3 or 5 volts. It can come from a Raspberry Pi, which is a very low power GPIO, or a uh, Arduino. I can set the voltage out here from 3 to 18 volts. Now, I'm using, I went back and put in my P-channel MOSFETs. This is how, exactly how it would work. If you don't particularly want this kind of power output, you could always use another 2N7000 and the BS250 in this configuration if you want a lower power output. I've run this and tested it. It works great. I have, I have my Smith trigger. I have my CMOS circuits that condition everything, and it's pertinent, and it's functionally as near as I can tell it's good as the TC4429 now this configuration again is inverting so it will behave like a TC4429 what if we want it non-inverting 
Hmm. All right, this circuit is virtually identical to the previous slide, except how I connected the two N7000 transistor Q1. Again, of course, it's an in-channel MOSFET. The drain stays connected to the 10K pull-up resistor. The gate is pulled high either to 3.3 or 5 volts. That depends on your drive logic. If it's a Raspberry Pi that uses 3.3 volt GPIO, got to tie it to 3. If it's 5 volts, say a 5 volt Arduino, tie it to 5, else it may not work correctly. And the input can be any GPIO pin. This one is non-inverting. How does it work? If we have a high in, we will get a high ouch that will be inverted to a low here, turning on the P-channel MOSFET and giving me a high out. Finally, we could take the two previous circuits, one inverting, one not inverting outputs, connect a motor between them, connect the two inputs together, and we have a simple H-bridge circuit. If the input is high, A goes low, B goes high, motor spins one direction, if the input goes low, the polarity reverses, A goes high, B goes low, spins in the other direction. And that completes this tutorial on circuits and driving MOSFETs and so forth. Hopefully you'll get some use out of this or learn something new. I learned quite a bit when I had to figure out how what interface to what without screwing up. So I would appreciate it if you click the like button and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. I'll put links in the description to the schematics. Thanks again.